Carbon emission reduction is one of the most critical challenges we face. Oxford is the, a world leader in, in innovation and I think there's a great opportunity and we're seeing it already for Oxford to be at the forefront to really make a difference, to, to, to address those global challenges. We have to get this right. We have to get this right for now and for the future, for the children of tomorrow who are going to be the ones living on this planet but also creating the new solutions to the world's greatest challenges. I'd really love to see a world where we focus more on the greener resources. It's really important for our future because if, once you get past the tipping point, there's no going back. By attracting the right investment, collaboration and interest in our innovation ecosystem, we believe that in the future, Oxfordshire's strengths can collectively deliver a billion tonne drop in global carbon emissions. This is Springfield Meadows. It's the greenest project we've done so far and I think it's the greenest project in the country. So the target here is to have zero embodied carbon at the construction stage. We use bio-based materials to lock up carbon, so that's things like timber, hemp and wood fibre because they've all grown, they're all plants originally and they absorb carbon dioxide as they grow. We then lock that up into the buildings and that helps to offset the carbon emitted from things like concrete and glass and steel. The automotive industry is going through a revolution, but back in 2005 I had a, a very simple question. Why are there no electric cars? And um, I did a PhD at Oxford University and that led to the spin-off of Yasa Motors in 2009 and we've been working and perfecting this motor technology for the last 12 years. We need to find ways of getting energy into the households, into the industry, into the country. A very good cell today can maybe absorb 22% of the solar spectrum and convert it into uh, electricity. Now if you can increase that percentage, and that's what we do, then of course with lower space you can generate the same amount of electricity. All organic matter emits methane as it decays, and if we don't capture it, it's 86 times more damaging to the planet than CO2. We're focused on dairy farms, um, and we also focus on small-scale farming. So that means any dairy farmer with 75 cows or upwards, they can deploy this technology and use that captured methane to power the farm, to power tractors, excess can be sold off into transport to power heavy goods vehicles. So it's that complete closed-loop circular economy. QDOT was a spin-out from the University of Oxford, spin out with a mission of trying to enable clean flight. At the moment, planes use a lot of power during takeoff, but actually quite a small amount of power during cruise. But you can size the engine to be as really efficient at cruise, and then you can use something like battery power to supplement the power during takeoff. And that can save you up to about 25% in fuel consumption. Fusion energy can be a safe and sustainable part of the world's future low carbon energy mix. It's got lots of attributes that make it really exciting as a low carbon energy source. It's abundant, lots of energy is released from that. At Cullum we've got two major fusion experiments. We've got the joint European Taurus which has been running here and leading the world in fusion research for several decades. We've got the MAST experiment, that's a UK's national experimental facility in fusion. So, Ultimately, we're all trying to produce fusion power plants, power stations using fusion that will keep the lights on, power our homes, power our factories. We're doing the research that will lead to that. If we were to build every house in the country in this way, that's lots of insulation, very airtight, and then we put lots of solar panels on the roof, that means you can generate as much energy each year as the houses use to get to net zero energy. There's three million houses planned over the next 10 years by the government and that would save 600 million tonnes of CO2 emissions. So it is pretty significant. Obviously we are delighted to be part of the Mercedes family now. Each electric car takes a significant amount of CO2 off the road. This adds up into uh, tens of millions of tonnes of CO2 over, over the life of the vehicle. So these are really significant um, environmental impacts. A 150 cow dairy farm can reduce carbon by 2,800 tonnes a year, and that's one 150 cow dairy farm. Head of COP, the 26 countries are committing to cutting methane emissions by 30%, and to be a part of that, to be at the forefront of that, so yeah, the future is incredibly exciting. 
QDOT's based on the Harwell campus in South Oxfordshire. It's in the energy cluster. It's just a really exciting place to, to be with people and to collaborate with really intelligent, really excited people in the kind of science and technology field. This technology will be one of the most important technologies for solar, so it will be applied worldwide, right? and we can say it has its roots in Oxfordshire. Oxfordshire has a great history of developing pioneering solutions. This is about dealing with the issues now that gives the, the future to our young people, to, to our grandchildren. Change is something we all need to embrace and to make the world a brighter one for our generation and for generations after us. Oxfordshire is in such a great, strong place to lead the charge, really, to reduce carbon emissions with the research capabilities, the ability to innovate and be creative about um, addressing these challenges that we face.